As I've reported on this before, I want to handle this subject with care and with tact, and I want to take it very seriously. Um, it seems that when Donald Trump was giving a speech at the Detroit Economic Club, among other things that occurred when he wasn't attacking Detroit or consistently lying, he seems to have soiled himself uh, during this speech. You can hear it multiple times. It seems that he is uh, letting out gas and potentially fecal matter as well during the speech. And then he tries to kind of cover it up by making a noise. He goes, Ugh, as he appears to be um, relieving himself. So I want to play that clip for you, but I want to show you this is not just the first time this has occurred. But let me show you what went down yesterday when Donald Trump spoke at the Detroit Economic Club. Listen carefully. Let's play it. This is a catastrophe for the American dream <laughs> and a dire crisis from commerce to labor to FEMA. Now, as I mentioned, this has happened frequently with Donald Trump, and we've been covering it here at the Midas Touch Network. And I think it is an important subject to cover. I know that corporate media is going to avoid it. And there are some people who kind of cover it, but like mock it and, and, and make fun of it. I, I want to just report on it and give you the data points right here because I think the health of candidates is significant. How they present themselves is when he is meeting with world leaders and senators, is he relieving himself in front of them? Is he defecating on the floor in front of them? What is taking place here? I'll just show you, for example, when he was holding uh, a meeting, when he was disgracing the office and also apparently defecating on himself, uh, it appears at least, let me be clear, this appears to be what's taking place. And there's some corroborating sources, like significant corroborating sources. Well, the late Dianne Feinstein was sitting next to him once and he appears to not only let out gas, but he also seems to have also relieved himself uh, as well. And you can see it in her face, how disgusted and kind of grossed out she is about what took place. Let's play it here. So today we're here in a bipartisan fashion to show leadership in an effort to end the senseless violence. And it, violence, it can be ended. Donald Trump's been doing this as well in front of world leaders. When the president of uh, Turkey, uh, Erdogan, visited the White House, it also appears that Donald Trump uh, relieved himself, uh, let out fecal matter as well, uh, let out gas too, in front of Erdogan. You can see the same kind of movement that you saw with the late Senator Feinstein. It's the same response, just like grossed out, repulsed, and then they have to stand there in that, in that just, the, the, it's described as the filthiest, most disgusting stench you'll ever be around is how many people describe it. But watch this interaction here. Let's play the clip. And then, of course, we were the ones who broke here at the Midas Touch Network. The story that Trump was doing this during the criminal trial where he was uh, found uh, guilty on 34 separate felony counts. He would fall asleep and then he would um, fart, he'd pass gas, and also potentially uh, relieve himself, let out fecal matter um, in, in front of the people sitting next to him. And we had lots of great sourcing in that courtroom and lots of people who were sitting next to him who saw it happen. And we also had some insight into that inner circle as well. Same thing, we are just repulsive. And here was our reporting at that time. I'm sure you know it went mega viral, but you know I think it was important that we handled that reporting delicately and seriously as we're doing the most recent incident that took place at the Detroit Economic Club where he, appeals, where he appears to have soiled himself again in public. Here, play this clip. Returning to the court proceedings as well, Maggie Haberman reports that Donald Trump continued to fall asleep during the proceedings as well. Um, and, you know, what I'm hearing from my sources as well is that, um, you know, and, and I'm hearing from credible sources who know what's going on in the courtroom. And what I'm hearing is, is that, um, take it for what it's worth, but that 
Donald Trump is actually farting in the courtroom and that it's very stinky around him. It's a putrid odor in the courtroom and that Trump's lawyers um, are like repulsed by the scent and the smell. And I'm not I'm not just saying that to be like, oh, ho, 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 funny, funny. I'm actually, you know, we have good sources there. And I'm hearing it from actual credible people that as he's kind of falling asleep, he is actually passing gas and that his lawyers are really struggling with the smell. I think you'll actually start to hear more of that. But again, from real credible sources. Now, take it for what it's worth. They may be going off the record, I mean, on background and telling me that because of... Um, you know, it's the Midas touch and they, you know, they think that we want to hear that. So you could judge it how you want to judge it. But real credible people who are there um, have saying that it's putrid um, around him. Now, um, you may know that I host a show with Michael Cohen. It's called Political Beatdown. And Michael Cohen suggested that during Donald Trump's speeches, he does this routine where he like goes like, eh, eh. And what Michael Cohen suggested was Trump's telling that story and going uh, uh, so that he can soil himself or let out farts or what have you and kind of mask it with the noise at the same time. And that's why he's telling this story and he's and in front of all of his people, he's going uh, here. Just you can watch what Michael Cohen had to say. And that's where Michael Cohen came up with the name to refer to Donald Trump as uh, Von Schitz and Pants. Here, let's play this clip. Magic and just bad news, bad things are happening. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It was staring us in the face the whole time, Michael Cohen. It Dude, was you staring. understand when he's going like, eh, eh. Donald Von Shits and Pants. That's what he was doing. He was trying to figure out a way how he can sort of squeeze that sucker out, right? And he's, he's going, eh, eh, eh. It's like, you know, when you were, you see like your baby when they're constipated. That's what Donald's doing. Can we play that again? And I'll show you the exact moment he lets it go. <laughs> Magic and just bad news. Bad things are happening. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Right there. Right there. I also spoke with a uh, Republican, former Republican Congress member, Adam Kinzinger, who described Donald Trump's stench as being a combination of ketchup and armpits and described it as one of the uh, most putrid odors he's ever been around in general. And this is someone, you know, who's, you know, who's, who's been in the military and he's been, he's been around potentially worse smells, but no, no, this is the worst smell Kinzinger's ever smelled. Here, play this clip. I'm genuinely surprised how people close to Trump haven't talked about the odor it's truly something to behold. Wear a mask if you can. Then Donald Trump responded to that and he had his team go after you and say, no, Kinzinger is the one who's smelly. And as Hillary Clinton said, if you could be baited by a tweet, how are you supposed to be expected to handle Vladimir Putin and, and, and other authoritarians? And Donald Trump clearly got baited by your tweet and your post, but let's just start with your post, the odor, the stench, the stink. How bad is it? What do you know about that? Yeah, I mean, it's not good. I mean, think about uh, the best way to describe it. I, I've tried to like, so take like armpits, ketchup, uh, like a butt and kind of put it in a blender and makeup and put that all in a blender. And that's, and, and you bottle that as a cologne. That's kind of that. Um, but it's amazing. Like I've been amazed that, you know, everybody's just kind of like learning about this now. But again, I think the bigger point is he's a weak human being, but look at this. He had, he had his people respond to me on this, by the way, they're always unnamed spokesmen because none of them want to put their names, even though I think I know who's doing this, like they don't want to put their names behind that because they know that their words are going to live forever. And uh, like, my goodness, I mean, Vladimir Putin, I'm going to tell you, she, President Xi of China, they're licking their chops at the idea of another Donald Trump term. Because I sat in the Oval Office once when Donald Trump begged a group of us to pull China ZTE out of the sanctions list 
from the National Defense Authorization Act because he made a personal uh, promise to President Xi because she asked him nicely on the phone. I mean, this is the kind of leader you know, of the greatest country in the world that we're looking at reinstating. And uh, the odor is the odor. And, you know, I think that needs to stay alive. People need to keep talking about it because he's the kind of guy that would use something like that all the time against other people. He needs a taste of his own medicine. You know, and so there's a reason Trump smells trending number one quite frequently and because it's rooted in this unfortunate reality. By the way, uh, former President Obama gave a speech over the weekend in Pittsburgh, or well, not over the weekend, he gave a speech yesterday, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and in the speech, one of the things that Obama talked about was, do you ever think that Donald Trump knows how to buy diapers? And then the, you'll hear in the crowd, somebody goes, his own, his own diapers. Here, listen for yourself. Or a car seat, or diapers. I remember buying diapers. I, I remember the first time I went in the store, right after Malia was born. I, I was like, what? That's how much diapers cost? I remember changing diapers. You think Donald Trump ever changed the diaper? No! No chance! Yeah. <laughs> I almost said that, but I decided I shouldn't say it. <laughs> if There's some other data points I want to introduce as well into this expose. Um, flies that are traditionally attracted to feces, rotting, decaying meat, seem to be always attracted to Donald Trump. At all of his speeches, the flies are uh, attracted, are, are coming by him. There may be a correlation, but here's a compilation that we created. Play this clip. And all of New England, actually, he's a disaster. He's radical left. RFK Jr. is radical left. It reminds me of this fly that's driving me crazy up here. This fly is brutal. I don't like flies. Oh, there's a fly. Oh, I wonder where the fly came from. <laughs> See, two years ago, I wouldn't have had a fly up here. You're changing rapidly, but we can't take it any longer. We can't take it any longer. A coal plant a week. I don't like flies. Get out of here, fly. Never been, never been a big fan of flies. You don't mind my bringing that up, do you? Anyway, this is a very aggressive sucker, though, this, this one. This one in particular is very aggressive. Like, I'm going to be aggressive for our country. I'm just giving you more data points here. Uh, Kathy Griffin, as well as uh, Mary Trump here, discuss that it's consistent what you're hearing here with people's descriptions of it. Let's play this clip. So it has a distinct smell that doesn't really get enough press. It's like body odor with kind of like a scented makeup products, but you can smell the hair products even outdoors. Don't make that face. I'm just being honest. I know. I, well, I, I I don't know. Maybe somebody needs to make a candle with that scent. Yeah. Uh, because oh that'll fly off the shelves, right? Fly right off the shelves. Christmas. And then finally, here is an individual on uh, TikTok who shares a story about this is going back actually decades where Trump's odor so putrid that he was uh, allegedly kicked out of a restaurant because people couldn't tolerate the scent. Here, play this clip. So, you know, when you post something and then someone bigger than you, like Adam Kinzinger, confirm it. And years ago, I posted about Trump being kicked out of Keene Steakhouse in Manhattan, where I was eating with my father in 1983 because his smell was so offensive. This wasn't an elderly thing. It was 1983. I wouldn't make fun of Trump today if it was an elderly thing. That's not what we do on the left. It happens to elderly people. Trump wasn't elderly. We didn't complain. The table next to him complained and the table behind him complained. We smelled it, but my father and I didn't complain about it. Trump was not elderly. The smell was so fucking offensive that they finally had to ask him to leave. And he did leave 
quietly right by us and it wafted us. Trump's been shitting all over himself for almost 40 fucking years. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, judge those data points for yourself, um, and we'll keep you. You know, we'll 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 continue this story if there's additional developments. But look, I, I think it's important as you consider um, Donald Trump's age, how he presents, how he interacts, to factor this data point in somewhere in the analysis. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe to get to 4 million subscribers together. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.